Ladies and gentlemen, I am the one and only DJ Storms, and I would like to welcome each and every single one of you back here to the channel on YouTube.com. It is, of course, Monday, August 30th, 2021, getting ready to wrap up the month of August for the DJ Storms brand. It was a very, very successful month, and I'm not in my usual element. I am not a ranting, screaming lunatic, as many of you people know me. Um, I'm actually uh, taking a break from that, and uh, we are bringing back a show that I have not done in quite some time. I'd like to welcome each and every single one of you to the Eye of the Storm exclusive interview show where we sit down with various people in and around the IWC to discuss their passions, their goals, and everything in between. And my first guest back in a long, long time, for the very first time here on the channel, I would like to welcome a dancer, an independent professional wrestler, and a DJ. She has such a busy schedule, I don't even know how she keeps up with it. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the channel for the very first time, Christina Sarni, a.k.a. C. Bunny. How are you? I'm happy, my guy. I'm glad to be the first one. Take it to a bang. We're taking it back. It's pretty, pretty crazy how it all worked out. Um, I greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to uh, sit down with me, especially uh, considering the insanely busy schedule that you have. You, I don't even know how you even find the time to sleep at this rate. I sleep at like midnight every night. So. Oh my god. <laughs> That's, That's how not something, I something I would do. But anyway, um, again, I greatly appreciate you taking the time. Hopefully I can make this a reoccurring thing. Um, before we start, I would actually like to, um, give you the floor and, uh, tell everybody where can they find you on social media. Well, very quickly, I have a website, uh, beingcbunny.com, and I'm on Instagram, cbunny2, no dad, and, uh, TikTok, beingcbunny2. Be so, but if you go to beingcbunny.com, that will give you the gist of, uh, all my information and my contacts and my story. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, for those of you wondering where you can find me on social media, you can find me uh, at the DJ underscore Storms. That is both on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, add me on Facebook for collaborations and business inquiries. Please send me an email. My email is, of course, stormstakeover at gmail.com. Please like the official DJ Storms business page. And I may just send you an invite to join the official DJ Storms posse group on Facebook. That is um, last Friday... Um, the LFU, uh, had to be deleted because my OBS, I'm not sure what the hell happened, it just crashed midway through, it wasn't a Wi-Fi issue, I think it may have had something to do with, um, my antivirus program that I got going on, I'm not sure what happened, I apologize about that, I strive on being a perfectionist, so I'm going to work very hard to make sure that that does not happen ever again, but, um, hopefully that does not happen this Friday for the LFU, but, um, if you want to check out the videos that you may have missed over the weekend, last weekend, um, the rewind for both SummerSlam and NXT TakeOver 36, that is currently up on the channel. If you missed it, please go and check it out. Uh, please make sure you hit that thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up if you have not already done so. It is vital. I mean, come on, I got C-Bunny here. We've been working on this for a couple weeks now, so come on, hit that like button, people. It's vital. Please make sure you keep the chat alive and you share out the stream on all platforms of social media. I'm talking about Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Pinterest, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever social media platforms that you use. And we're going to get as many people in here as possible. I'm talking about your mothers, your fathers, your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten cousins, twice, three times, four times removed, your dogs, your cats. And I know my uh, number one mod, Danielle, is in the chat right now. She knows what I'm going to say next. Especially you guinea pigs, because I've read so many articles that if guinea pigs are exposed to DJ storms, they are said to live long, happy, healthy, and fruitful lives. So please make sure you tell your guinea pigs DJ storms on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button and hit that notifications bell with a huge coup de gras. That way you will know whenever I pop up on YouTube. Because whenever I pop up on YouTube, it is the best time to be on YouTube. Because everybody wants a piece of the storms, Meister. Anyway, enough of the self-brand promotion, the advertisements. Uh, we're going to get straight into the festivities here. And Miss um, C. Bunny, my first question for you here on the Eye of the Storm is, um, I would like to know, what was it like growing up with a hearing disability? I, uh, I, I, it's, um, you miss out on a lot. So, like, imagine going to school every single day, just 
uh, with the loud background noises, not be able to understand anybody. And like communication is key because how do you communicate and socialize and make friends if you don't know how to understand one of each other? And also when you're growing up, you know, people don't understand or have enough patience. Like one of the things I hated the most was they would say something to me and I would say, what? And then it'd be like, never mind. Well, I'll tell you later. And that I always felt like invisible or not important to them. And I didn't step out of my like disability bubble until I discovered performing. Um, it, I'm in my 30s now. It still affects me with what goes on growing up with a disability. But, you know, it's just like a wrestling match. You figure it out, you got knocked down, and uh, the comeback is always greater than the setback. I actually couldn't have put it better myself. That was, um, hey. it's, it's very, very true. Uh, comeback's always greater than the setback for sure. Um, uh, you mentioned performing. Now, um, over the years, um, you have accomplished so much. Um, you went, you actually uh, accomplished uh, becoming a backup dancer for a uh, Grammy Award winning artist, uh, T Pain's music video. Um, you actually, um, when uh, you made that documentary, I watched that documentary, and it was a fantastic documentary. For anyone that hasn't watched that documentary, just look up Being Sea Bunny on uh, YouTube and go out of your way and watch it. It's 15 minutes. It was fantastic. So I watched that documentary, and you literally took your hearing aids out, put them on the table, and then just went for it, just started dancing right out of the blue. Uh, can you take us through what was going through your mind when you did that? One of that day, we all had a freestyle to music that we never heard before because he wrote it. So that made me scared. I'm like, I'm not familiar with the song. I don't know where the sound is going to be at. And we're in like a garage because the, the sound is bouncing off. And we had a freestyle. So that means you had to listen to the music and like freestyle according to the beat. And it's just like DJing. Like every music has to hit every note. Like every, you, every feel has to be according to the music. And um, he went through everybody. He forgot about me. It's like, and I was like, oh, he forgot about me. But before the audition started, he said this, I want you guys to step outside of the box and create your own box and show me who you are. And it was just that moment where I felt the grace of God telling me, like, show, show them what the gift of dance I gave you. So I took my hand out, and I remember I went to the speakers, and I I didn't have a feel for it, so I ran back, and I was like, and I just started walking, and I counted off, and I started dancing, and every, every dance move connected to every note, and in the corner of my eye, it's like, and this is one of the best moments of my life, I see everybody get up on their feet, and like, listen, you don't want me to have your job, there's only two openings for the girl, but it was in that moment where we all realized that we're all misfits and dancing is what makes us feel good and bring us together. Just like wrestling. Many of us are outcasts, but we love wrestling because we all have that common ground. And then, so I knew that was the dance that I was born for, to show everybody that this is who I am and I'm feeling the beat. And we're in a line and T-Pain picked the two girl dancers. And then all of a sudden he said, yo, see, bunny get on up here. And like, he created a spot just for me. And I got to go on a small tour with him. I did a music video. Wow. Back in the day, we would play music videos on TV, guys. And, <laughs> and it, was a good, it, it, it was a great opportunity that T-Pain gave me a chance to show the world that despite my disability, I can still be a backup dancer for T-Pain. So that's one of the, one moment I'll never take for granted, ever. It was pretty, pretty crazy because I remember watching uh, that portion of the documentary and it it, it it literally felt like something out of a movie. Like I was literally just, I was literally just like so much on your side. I was just like, oh my God, please, please let this woman get the spot, get the spot, get the spot. And then when you finally got the spot, it was almost, it was almost like equivalent to when uh, Daniel Bryan finally won the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania yeah. 30. Like that, like that moment was such a, a monumental moment. You got it, and it's just like, and nobody knows this. But like afterwards, we like we didn't st we didn't get excited, and then at, when we left the building, we're running around, tackling each other, and then we had to go to his studio, and I pull up, and there's a parking spot for Lil Wayne and and uh, Birdman. And I was like, 
I didn't say I was allowed in this world. Now I'm in this world. It's like, it was insane. But it's that, it's that like once in a lifetime moment chance that, you know, I auditioned for 10 years before I ever got that job. Hey, so, I mean, it does sound cliche, but hard work does pay off. 100%. 100%. And it makes you, it makes you very humble. And because of all the rejection, I learned, I learned like how the business is and, you know, crossing over from the dance world to the wrestling world, I think I put myself on a higher, I, I, I set the bar higher for me as far as like how to treat people and how to act in the performance. And, um, you know, there's a lot of tiny business uh, promotions out there that think they know what show business is about, but they have no clue what it's about. Um, and they're not humble. So this, bit, this wrestling business has a gross side to it. Unfortunately, so. the wrestling community has a gross side to it. I've been on the receiving end of that. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah, I, I told you. That I got called a ring rat. I'm like a ring rat. Why are you, why are you calling me a ring rat? I had this guy said, um, you know, your wrestling is bad if you DJ. And I'm like, are there any men in this in this like business? Like, this is how you treat people. Like in the real business world, my boss would not say that to me. You want to act like a business, then act like a real business. Because in the business world, that stuff wouldn't fly. You see, um, it's one thing with a content creator. Because that's the thing. Because I've, I've, I've been doing this for like four years as like a little side hobby that I do. And I don't do it for money. I haven't made a single dime off of this. I just do it because I love to do it. Because we're, we're all like passionate about it at heart. And... You know, it's one thing for uh, some, like, random-ass troll to just, uh, you know, attack me in my DMs and stuff like that. But to have to have an actual promoter do that, that's... Oh, it, that, that stuff like that gets under my skin. I'm passionate about performing because it's just, there's so much... It's just like I went through 10 years of auditioning to get a really good spot, like... This stuff isn't handed to you. Like, you gotta do the work for it. You have to. That's why, as entertainers, we have such issues, body issues, uh, rejection issues, because we're doing everything we can, and we're going through the grime of everything to, to do the, the the spotlight of it. And, you know, and uh, it really humbled you, so. Well, you know, so. Some... Wait, 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 what'd you say? <laughs> what'd you say? I had fun. I mean, like, hey, I mean, you're going on a tour with. T Pain. I mean, how can you not have fun? <laughs> you're rolling out with with you're, you're walking on a red carpet with freaking Birdman and Little Wayne. I mean, like, how can you not have fun doing that? House. When I went to his house, I swear, like, I felt like it was a like he was on MTV Cribs. So we're like, yo, we saw this on TV. Like, and we had to be like professional, but like, um, luckily one of the other dancers is from Jersey, so we had the same. You understand about Jersey people? We have a we have a nice vibe to us, and I mean, like, come on, I'm Jersey's finest, so I'm yeah, just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like, well, like in the, when we were doing a music video, like in between takes, we looked at each other, like you know, like in the in the business in the wrestling business, you're not allowed to mic out, but in, same as entertainment, you're not allowed to mic out and be like I'm professional, but it's but, but I look at my uh, my my co dancer. And I'm like, yo, this is what we live for. Like, why can't we get excited about having this opportunity to be in a music video? Why can't I be excited about like getting pinned and kicking out and everybody being freaking excited? You know, what I mean? it's just like we need to like be professional, but we're allowed to enjoy what we want to enjoy. Like when I went to wrestling school and I wore a whole Hogan shirt, they're like, why are you wearing that? You don't wear wrestler t-shirt but this is what we're doing this is why we're inspired to wrestle yeah that makes no sense it's messed up <laughs> <laughs> well um you did mention uh professional wrestling and um uh actually i would like to ask um how how long have you uh been a professional wrestler now for about four years really um yeah but i retired doing to, to i think eight concussions you retired I because of eight concussions. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my it got God. To the point where I was going to, like, three a year. It didn't matter how much I tucked my chin. I think there are ways that you can get concussions without actually hitting your head, even, like, the impact of the upper body. Like, Mick Foley talked about this in his documentary. He's like, sometimes you can get a concussion without hitting your head. Um, and I, I take a move that I never took before, so maybe that was on both of us, but... Um, 
it was a fact in my memory in a really scary way. I would get dizzy. And if anybody has a concussion, you know, it's just not a fun feeling. So imagine going the majority of the year like that. But I really tried hard. I moved to Orlando to, like, to, like, learn from... I, I trained with Santana Garrett and Lince Dorado. Lince Dorado, um, wow. Yeah. In Orlando, like, I trained with them a couple of times. Santana was awesome. I went on seminars, like, I would... I I had, like, uh, I was an extra for WWE, like, a couple of times. Did, like, tryout matches with them. I Like, I really tried hard because, once again, like, I knew I'm not a good athlete, but I wanted to show my Oh, story. shut up. You're amazing. Yeah, <laughs> but I wanted to be the first ever uh, hand and pair wrestler signed in the WWE. I wanted to be that name for for everybody in the disability community. But unfortunately, that's not in the cards for me. There's something else. Um, so whoever takes that spot, <laughs> like, give me proud. Even though somebody tried to take, if somebody in Impact is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Someone on AEW is called the Bunny, so. You're not. I mean, maybe that's it. I'm like. They're still in it. your gimmick. They're still in your gimmick. Oh, and my, I had it first, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> you know, I actually got a concussion myself. It's actually, it's actually a pretty funny story. My family just mocks me over this. Um, it was about like three years ago, um, like a little bit after WrestleMania 34, and I was playing ping pong at a college in the student center, right? And my friend at the time, Peter, um, him and me, like, we were very, very competitive when it comes to ping pong, and I was really starting to get into it. So we hit the ball, and he it went high, and I dove to get it. And in the arcade, to the side of the ping pong table, there were these um, race car games, right? And no one ever played them. And I hit the back of my head on one of those race car games. But here's the thing. It hurt for, like, 15 seconds, and then I was fine. I got it on Wednesday, I was fine Thursday, I was fine Friday, all of a sudden I started to feel dizzy, I had a pain right here, I was lightheaded while at work on Saturday, cool. and I actually cool. drove home with it, I'm not lying, I drove home with, oh, yeah. with a freaking concussion, no. and my dad's looking at me like I'm, like I'm absolutely insane. And uh, then the following day, I found out, oh, yeah, you had a concussion. I literally had, for like the first day, I had to like sit in a dark room with a towel over my head for like seven hours. There's no real, di no real diagnostic of it, and there's no treatment. People are like, you go to the doctor? Why? They can't x-ray me to see if there's a concussion. Like, they can just, they ask you questions. So it, it, it's very tricky because you just don't know if you have it. You don't know how long it takes for, for it to get better. So, um, and honestly, just the right blow to my head, I could lose more hearing. And it just got to the point where, like, I'm always hitting my head. I just, I can't miss this anymore. Yeah, absolutely. But, but now that I'm watching, listen, I'm going to give AEW so much props here. They wrestle every match like it's a pay-per-view. And I'm just Exactly. Watching, That's why people love it so much. They're taking bumps on on the apron, on the ground. And I'm like, who does that? Like, Did, did you I'm see cool. Rampage? Did you see the Lucha Bros in Jurassic Express last Friday on Rampage? One move that I was up, and I wanted for them to like complete it so much because they did. But remember when they were on the turnbuckle and they were about to do that giant something slightly went off, but like they still pulled it off 100%. Um, but when I see them take bumps and stuff, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Like, I miss wrestling, but I don't miss bumping and all that. No. Okay. Well, you well, you know, with the charisma that you possess, I saw a lot in that documentary. With the charisma that Thank you possess, you. before we move on to the next question, you can be a manager. You can be like a commentator. You could be an on. You could be a persona. I'm a I'm Titan and wrestling. I'm the general manager. There you go. There you go. You yeah. can be a, a figure other than a wrestler in any independent promotion. Trust me on that. With the charisma that you have, you you'd be over, and you're not even in the ring. That was a rest for a little bit. That was that was not me at all. <laughs> but um, I would actually love to know um, who were okay. some of your biggest inspirations that made you want to become a professional wrestler? Hulk Hogan. I I first started watching Hulk Hogan when I was five, but then but then that faded, and then um, as soon as I saw Stone Cold, The Rock, Hardy Boy, Mick Foley, um, Love Page, Page. 
it's by the inspiration goes when I am. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. I, when I saw, this is silly, but I stopped watching. I used to be obsessed with wrestling. I I met Nick Foley and he gave me his guinea pig. Like, that's how that's how into wrestling I was. I, I have this. <laughs> but, um, you know, I met the rock. Like, I was very obsessed with wrestling and then it faded as I got older. But then when I saw Total Divas, um, on TV, and I saw Paige, I was like, wait a minute. The, this is not the broad and panty matches anymore. Like, go, go can wrestle. And then Tough Enough came out, and I, I I submitted my audition for them, and it was really cool. They used my audition tape on the on the jumbo screen at all their live events. The community people send it to me. I was in their commercial, and I posted on Twitter, and Paige retweeted it. Wow. And I was like, wait, out of all the top one up people, she retweet audition, she retweeted mine and I didn't I didn't make it, but I got an email and I was like, you know what? F it. I'm gonna be a professional wrestler. And I went to school and then I met her and I said she inspired me to go to wrestling school. I wanna be the first ever uh here to pay wrestler, gave me a big ass hug. And then on my first match I had, I sent her a picture on Twitter. I said, yeah, I'm getting my first match. And then she was tweeting, like, good job, mama. <laughs> like, so wow. I find wrestling definitely paid, but I do admire, like, almost everybody in the in the attitude era. That's, that's my generation right there. <laughs> so, um, now, you, you've wrestled in a lot of matches throughout the course of your professional wrestling career before you retired, correct? Yeah. So, out of all the matches that you have uh, wrestled in, What's that one match that really oh, sticks out to you? What's What do you feel has been your best match ever? The best match, it was in the documentary. So, um, it was a tag team match. Um, my partner was Vinny Pacifico, and I went against Scotty Cruz and Jose Salvador, but he's um, CJ now. And um, we, it was just perfect. Cause it was such a gimmick tag team match. And every single one of us, was awesome in our gimmick. Um, especially Scotty Cruz really brought me, he really put me over because we knew how to feed off each other's character. And it was his idea. He's like, Bunny, we have to have a dance contest in the middle of the match. And I remember the promoter, was like, you know, he's like, that dance contest is stupid. Like, he hated the idea. But we still went through it. And they played Low by T Pain, who I used to dance for. And it was my turn to freestyle, and then I pulled out my, my magic trick, the fire trick. Oh, yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. That's, a, that's an old school bunny trick that I used to do in my dance performance. My audition was it's so funny. Um, with a, I made the fire trick, and I jumped really hard on the ring, and everybody, it was kind of like I set off a bomb, and everybody exploded. Yeah, and, that, was, that was towards the end. I remember that. Yeah, and I had my very first, that was awesome, to get a chant like that, like, you don't make people chant like that, like, that's organic, so, to the promoter who says, I hate that, that's a horrible idea, one person's garbage is another person's treasure, like, that was he such was just a matter proven wrong, they all just shut, you, you just shut him up pretty quickly. <laughs> We don't, I, I appreciate the opportunity he gave me to wrestle, but we didn't see eye to eye on, like, on, like, cares and stuff. But that was my, that match was always my favorite, because that screamed Team Bunny. I'm the only girl in the wrestling match. I'm showing my dance move. I'm showing the underdog. And we didn't win, but you know what I did? I was still the biggest supporter of others to, like, yo, go get the belt. Go get the belt. It was a tournament. Um, so that match will forever be my favorite match of all time. And I mean, you, uh, you completely, you, hey, you broke the rules. Rules are meant to be broken, and hey, it paid off in the end. I mean, I wish I thought it, I wish, if I was a wrestler, I would fit in more in the Attitude Era and Hulk Hogan era. I, it's all gimmick. Like, I love performing and showing my character, and what I've learned is that me, um, I wrestled Darius Carter one time. Oh, me? Yeah. I interviewed him actually a couple years ago. He's fantastic at what he does. Oh yo, I'm. He is so good. I he, he like I said, yo, I love to hate him. He makes me hate him. And I'm gonna send you the interview that him and me okay. had a couple years ago. Um, like he was just like walking around like in his scarf and all that, 
Yeah. And then, and then, like, I put my hand out for a handshake, and he's like, uh, you know, it was a decent introduction, but I will not be shaking your hand. It was, it was, it was so great. Like, I was actually trying not to smile myself because, like, here I am. I'm, I'm trying to be a professional interviewer, and he's, he's over here being like the biggest heel on the block. It, it, it was, it, it really brought me back to my childhood days. It really did. He wanted, he wanted to give me the boot, and I'm like, no, you're not. And he's like, yes, I am. And I'm like. I don't care if I get made fun of for not taking this move. Two months later, he broke a girl's jaw. I'm like, See? I was smart, thank you. But Darius taught me, like, I just did a roll-up on him. And that freaking got a pop from everybody. More than somebody doing a fancy high-flying move. So I learned from WWF, Hulk Hogan. I learned from Darius, Scotty Pink. I learned from all these people, like... It's the little thing that as long as you commit to it, that's going to make people pop. Not just all the fancy stuff. So I think that's how I got away with not being a great wrestler. <laughs> and more just my, like, character stuff. Um, but a gimmick can only take you so far. <laughs> you know, it also, it also has to do with the fact that you you were such a relatable baby face. That's the thing. I'm being a baby face. It's and fun. Darius Carter... You know Darius Carter's just a natural-born prick. He's a natural-born <laughs> heel. He's a natural-born heel. So if you got a great well, baby I face, like face. <laughs> yeah, if you got an, a natural baby face in yourself, and then you got a prick like Darius Carter, it's going to make for a great moment where people are just going to want to root for you no matter what. They, they want to see you kick his ass. They want to see you beat him no matter what. So that's always, when I wrestle people, that's my two thing. where with their permission, we will talk about what they can say and not say about my hearing, and then I go, you sure? And I said, you can say this, because guess what? The more they hate you, the more they're going to love you. And now it's always the psychology we put on everybody. I said, this is acting. I know you don't mean it. And, um, and also, whoever I wrestle, like, Personally, I want them to know that they had a we had a good time with each other. Like I love trying to purposely make them laugh in the middle of the match. Like that's I'm I'm the asshole in that match. You, you know you know what that reminds me of? Um, my but, dad my dad told me the story. Um, where um back during the Attitude Era, um there was like a little uh bet backstage. <laughs> there was like a bet backstage between like Edge and Christian and Stone Cold Steve Austin, when The Undertaker and Stone Cold Steve Austin were feuding, and Stone Cold Steve Austin was being crucified right in the middle of, right in the middle of Monday Night Raw, um, they would have a little thing backstage where, yeah, they would have a little thing backstage where Edging Christian would always go up to Stone Cold Steve Austin right in his face and go, look at me, and try and make him laugh. And then in the middle of that angle where Stone Cold is being crucified, Edge and Christian, who were part of the brood, they literally went up to Stone Cold Steve Austin on camera and in front of all the people, and they literally went, look at me, as Stone Cold Steve Austin was being hoisted up on the cross. So Stone Cold Steve Austin, in an interview, he's like, I'm trying to sell this damn angle, and they're trying to make me laugh right in the middle of it. That's what it reminds me of. It's so funny that you mentioned that. Um, I don't think I would be able to keep a straight face if I was, like, feuding with you. Um, my favorite, like, hot moment, also, like, when Nick Foley said to the rock, like, oh, where'd you get that? He's like, it doesn't matter where you get it. And, like, he, like, ran out of the way and he's like, Foley! And, like, you can see the little smirk. And that's what I would always do, like, even when a girl that is supposed to be the biggest heel, there's, like, videos and I see a little smirk and I'm like, you love me. <laughs> there we go. Yep. Yep. So, um, here, here's a question. Um, I would actually like to know, if you were still a professional wrestler right now, um, who are some people that you would actually want to face? Um, on the indies or the anywhere. professional? Anywhere. Anywhere. Ooh, cool. Um, I would definitely... I would want to be, on the indie level, like, I would want a three-way with Ryan Shepard and Bitches Vicky. Um, I, I had, had a feeling you were going to say Vicious Vicky. Yeah. Um, and Riley and I go way back. So I would definitely want a rematch with that. I would love to, if Paige was still that one, I would still love to uh, do my thing with her. Never and, say um, never because, you know, Edge came back, Daniel Bryan came oh, yeah, back. Yeah, 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 never say never. 100%. I'm trying to think, like, I've been, 
It's by who are the females that I want. I want to wrestle Santana again. She's so like crisp and clean with every move that she has. Um, but what and I got to be a tag partner, so I was like, yo, this is fucking cool. I'm tagging with Santana again. <laughs> I tag with jo uh, Jillian Hall, like anybody that I like, work with, I'm like the biggest Mike ever, so. Um, but yeah, I would definitely want to, I would try, I want to try a, a triple threat match with them. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, Vicky, actually, um, there's an ISPW show going down in uh, Butler, New Jersey, actually on September 5th. Um, Sergeant Slaughter's gonna be there, um, Rikishi's gonna be there, Crowbar's gonna be there, uh, Vicky's also competing on the show. Um, are you going? <laughs> are you going? I might, maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going. So if I see you there, I'll be wearing my DJ Storm shirt. I'll give you a free wristband as well. I'm sorry, you cut off there. What'd you say? Okay. All right, hang on, you're back. What'd you say? Yep. I can't hear you. Oh, you cut your... There we go. There we go. Try it again. I'm the real DJ, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, Here's a here's a question. Um, What actually inspired you to become a DJ? Ooh, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> that was simple. So, um, I, um, I, growing up, I love going to the club, and I love... I've always wanted to be able... I love performance in music, but I was like, man, like, I would love to, like, create music. And, um... Uh, I'm a big fan of the the show Jersey Shore, and when I watch, uh, when I watch Pauly D just have a great time DJing, I was like, ooh, like I want to have a good time at work. And um, with COVID happening, people got puppies and married and babies. I got a DJ board. Um, it's also, it's, I feel like it's the next avenue for me to perform. Also, I needed a way to like, how do I work with? not having to communicate with anybody verbally because of COVID and everything with the mask mandate. It really just, um, after, and I, I tried being like a letter carrier. I tried all these jobs where I can try and work and not have to read my lip with them. And it was terrible. I didn't get accommodation and nothing. It was just horrible. And finally, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to live my best life. And I'm going to do what makes me happy. And I'm going to start DJing. And it's so great because I feel like I'm wrestling all over again. Meaning, like, I'm learning new things, I'm watching new people, I'm, like, networking. It's always great to learn something new and have, and you have to keep that in small, attainable goals. So, and it's the greatest revenge for anybody that wouldn't let me have the art cord in the car. <laughs> it's, it's crazy to think because I always, I always, um, I always, uh, see your Instagram stories. And, like, whenever I see your Instagram stories, it's like you're always... You're always like doing a DJing gig. It's like you never yeah. take a break. It's that I learn something new every day, and it's, it's just so much fun. And when I DJ my first gig at the, and I'm very lucky that was my first gig at the Shore House in Point Pleasant to play a song, and I just pe see people going like, "It's like it's like being a wrestler again. What song is gonna make you pop? How am I, am I gonna keep you engaged? Just like in the beginning of the match." Uh, it, it, it's up and down, up and down. Like, how do I keep you going? Um, I always tell people every aspect of my life created the foundation for the next. So I truly believe with the combination of dancing and wrestling and performing and also with the drummer, it really taught me how to utilize these skills without having to hear fully what's going on. And that's another thing. I had to teach myself to learn how to hear each sound. Because I don't know exactly what you're hearing, but I got to go with my feel if this is connecting with you guys or not. Well, it's it, it, let me tell you something. Um, you've definitely inspired a lot of people, and um, you know, you've definitely inspired you. me. You definitely inspired me because, like, I've I've been personally dealing with a disability myself. I've been dealing with an intestinal disability. I've I've been dealing with UC for the last five years of my life, and uh, you know, it, it's it's been a challenge for me it, more more so mentally and emotionally because sometimes I feel like I'm never going to get better. It's been a yeah, and it's still, like stuff like that, which like we can all relate in the same pool. It's like having an invisible disability. Mm -hmm. We don't look like there's something wrong with us. We don't look like we're carrying a struggle every single day. So, um, 
So it gets exhausting, and then that's where the mental health kicks in. And I definitely struggle with mental health, depression. I was on anxiety medication. I mean, I hit rock bottom plenty of times. It's just the more you hit rock bottom, the more you learn, like, I'm going to get out of this. Just There's only one the way to go, and that's up. Yep. So I'd actually like to know, um, what are some of the goals that you plan on accomplishing within the next, uh, say, five to ten years? I'm I'm hoping to be a touring DJ, and if COVID ever goes away, I will. I want to be I'm a so professional sick of it. speaker. I'm so <laughs> sick of it. <laughs> but I really want to be a professional speaker. Like I want to. I want to go into all the schools. I want to be that girl with the assembly, and I want to show people my documentary, tell them my story, and because the most important thing that I'm telling people is that just because you feel this way now, especially in middle school, if you feel different, you don't have to feel like that in the future. Because when I, like in my documentary, I said, I want to be on TV, I want to do this, I want to do all this. I'm tired of being the dis disabled bully girl in middle school, and I don't want to be like that growing up. I want to show people, like, here's another visual. Like, put the work to it. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be fun. I would say you've accomplished that and more. Oh, uh, thank you. I mean, I mean, I'm not you, done yet. <laughs> I, oh, no, no. You're not done yet. That, that's, that's the crazy part about it. You're not even done yet, and you've accomplished so much already. You're about to, you know, completely break the mold. It's a very, I think it's what kept me from... To be transparent, I think it's what kept me from committed suicide because it's just, I had these goals and I don't want to, I want to know what it feels like. I want to feel that, that emotion. I want to feel that success and I want to feel like a rock star. I deserve to feel my dream come true and I'm not going to do that without a fight. And wrestling taught me that. Always come back. When you're getting the shit beat out of you, at the end, when you get that one, two, three, ah, it's the greatest feeling ever. You know, that, that, that is probably the, uh, the biggest thing when it comes to the realm of professional wrestling because, like, not many people nowadays in professional wrestling, uh, whether you be a, uh, a television star or whether you be just an independent professional wrestler, not a lot of people have that because um, what you have is something special. Whether you're a professional wrestler, whether you're a dancer, whether you're a DJ, what you have is something that everyone would strive for and that's the ability to connect with others and that's Thank why you. yeah and that's why you have been so successful because you've been able to connect with others because of how much struggles you've gone through and yet uh, you've yeah. accomplished so much and that's Thank that's so that's that's why i wanted to have you on to begin with and um with that being said <laughs> with that being said i would actually like to um i would like to ask um what advice would you give to anyone that's dealing with any sort of disability. Do this world, and this is the hard truth here. Just like in that Rocky speech, you know, the world is all sunshine and rainbows here. The world is not made for people with disabilities. We have to adapt to this world. Let's quit being like mopey and upset about things that we can't control and attack the things that we can. There's a and there's a solution. It may not be the solution we want, but there's a solution to every single issue that we have. And me being hearing impaired, I was did not I was not able to communicate with anybody. And the toughest thing that my mom ever made me do was when I was in middle school, she dropped me off in front of a pizzeria and said, Go inside by yourself, order by yourself. To, and I knew like this is the world we're gonna be in. So start preparing yourself now to be independent and strong. That way, we'll get, the, we'll get the hang of having a disability. It's not easy, 100%, it's not easy. But let's get the hang of it and start, because we have, we have the thing that we all understand with everybody is that we have the same life experience as everybody. We all have to go to school. We all have to figure out what we want to do. We all have romantic issues, all that stuff. Let's get a hang on this now. Set small attainable goals. Whoever your higher power is, Jesus, definitely have a great connection. Can you need somebody in the corner? And keep going. Every step back is a setup for a comeback. Maybe it's cheesy, but it's hundred percent true. Oh no, trust me on that. Um I've 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 heard the same cliche 
cliche phrases over and over again, but uh, you are 100% correct. Um, you just got to keep on going. And um, But uh, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up uh, this interview. Um, see Bunny. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it was fun. I like you. I greatly appreciate you taking time. Hopefully, I see you at that ISPW event. Hopefully, I see you there. Hopefully, uh, you know, I will. Um, I'll be sure to uh, give you a free wristband. Anyone that's going to the um, to the ISPW show again, Sergeant Slaughter is going to be there. Crow is going to be there. Rikishi's going to be there. Uh, Vicky's going to be there. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll see C Bunny there. I'm definitely going to be there. So, uh, if you want to. You know, approach me. I'll give you a wristband. Take a selfie. Um, maybe I'll call you an idiot like I usually do. Maybe. Uh, but um, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the eye of the storm. Again, C Bunny, thank you so much. Um, where can we find you? One last time. Where can we find you on social media? Um, right there. Being C Bunny too. There you go. Again, like, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the links in the description. Check out the documentary as well. The documentary is in the description. She's C Bunny. And I'm DJ Storms. This has been the Eye of the Storm. And I will catch you on Friday for the LFU. Yeah, buddy.